One, we must understand the importance of encouraging political participation. In every nation, it is, the idea of politics is not just meant for a particular set of people. Every citizen of the nation has to participate in politics. And another important factor is political socialization. We recommend that even education as lectures are supposed to do with politics being incorporated in our school curriculum. Thereby, we are cultivating the ideas and values of political leadership, even in our youth, right from this age, even right from primary school. Another very important point is that for us to have effective political leadership, we have to have an independent judiciary. A judiciary who is not tied to the apron string of any executive arm of government. And most importantly, again, is the idea of an effective electoral commission. We have to have an effective and incorruptible electoral commission that will not also be tied to the apron string of any government. And most importantly, another point we are adding is the fact that. We are all, all, all have to participate in politics. We should not just sit as anxious critics, but let us rise up as committed and devoted collaborators. In order for us to effect the change, we have to champion the cause of our generation. We have to come to the forefront and prove the new way to effect leaders. Then we need to give leaders who have the capacity of an option for this man, the compassion of a the selflessness of an individual, and the wisdom of a cover. For when we end the rest of the body is intact. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Fatima Mugrene from Class 15. Some of the problems, or one of the problems we in my class in Nigeria face today is the very limited source of revenue generation in Nigeria. We, we depend solely on oil, and I think, I think that, is, that, is, that is not enough. The oil prices are very unstable. The oil, oil is very finite and limited. We can't keep generating oil forever. So I believe we can develop other sectors like agriculture, tourism, our culture, our human culture, like cultural festivals, and even human capital. At least Nigeria is the most popular country in West Africa with a population of over 150 million people. Um, how I think this sector can be developed, especially agriculture. Um, agriculture has so much potential and we in Nigeria underutilize agriculture. Like we have sixty percent unutilized arable land. And I think there's so much potential. We have so much land on the usable land which is on not in use. And um, I think we can also develop our own fertilizer. The country spends so much importing fertilizer. We can, from time back, we have started developing organic fertilizer, which are safer for the soil, which um, have a hand in preventing global warming because the pollution is less. And so we develop this organic fertilizer instead of inorganic fertilizer, which are even less cheaper to produce. And then, um, Another sector which I believe we have so much in is the tourism sector. We have so much in Nigeria. We have so many diverse cultures. We have so many beautiful locations. We have so many falls. We have so many beautiful locations like the Sassu State. We have the, a very breathtaking view of the Bafo Fall Formation, which is only the second of its kind in the world, but it's in a very remote area, very, very difficult to access. And um, there are so many areas. We have solid minerals like in Guyu, Adamawa State. We, we find there is the largest limestone deposit in West Africa, which can be harnessed to, for cement production. So I think there is so much potential we have in Nigeria, and this, we, have to, we need to expand our pool for revenue generation. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Charles Makanda I would like to speak on poverty. Poverty is one of the biggest problems facing Nigeria today, despite the fact that Nigeria is a very rich and great nation. But how come poverty is stopping us? What is poverty? I should realize that poverty is inaccessibility to the basic necessities of life. What are basic necessities? Food, shelter, 
Okay. Now, why is it that in the world of Nigeria, in this country, they cannot access it? Just like the fact that Nigeria belongs to the OPEC uh, group. Why? Let's take a look at it. Education. There are lots of people in the rural areas who cannot have formal education. Students should encourage their children to learn trades. Things of our education, we should encourage them. If you watch outside this country, it's not just for my education. Some of the richest people in this world, they are into sports, they are into music. Students should encourage them that to do also be the source of the poverty. Now, formal education. How come formal education is associated with poverty? There are lots of people in this country, they've come to the university, they've attended lots of schools. But there is a gap between formal education and what we need in society, which leads to poverty. There is a need for the LTC also called technology transfer. You learn agriculture in school. There are lots of people that study agriculture. How can this be linked to the society? Students in the university should have project work that will be useful to agricultural companies. Coppers in the university, two people that study agriculture should not be posted to us to posted to us for our offices. They should be posted to farms. Let there be dignity for agriculture, not just offices. Now, the other problem, the other thing that causes poverty is the, the kind of uh, reliance on oil. There are other areas just like my colleague, like you said, tourism. There are areas, areas like mining. There are lots of areas in this country which most of, uh, of our resources are just geared towards uh, oil money. Now, another aspect is the way government funds are being used. Some of our leaders at the rural areas are quite for the next series. Money has been released by government on several occasions, but are these monies properly used? The solution is that these monies should be properly used. And how do we achieve that? We need credible leaders. Money has been released by government for operatives, and this money is used by chiefs, rich people in society. Please, I can join Nigeria so that this money should be used for the poor so that they can now achieve our objectives. Thank you very much. Tomatoes. 
It's not only like a boring pronunciation, it can focus on ginger. I have you that good ginger, people that possess ginger, ginger or other food ginger products, to the final, up to the final destination I drop for someone. And it's not, you're not only encouraging industrialization, but at the same time, you are building local economies that are built around that product. And you are encouraging the farmers to move from just doing mixed cropping out of <coughs> to commercial agriculture in that product. At the same time, too, that in which every business, we are not just going to do farming because not any people do this to feed ourselves. We are going to farm healthy supply of food. A way you can build have big farms, go to serious farming, and build it, and raise your farm in relation to good schools through farming. Thirdly, that was not every business. Thirdly, is having access to financing and inputs. Many of our farmers today complain of lack of access to loans, and we have big commercial banks. As a matter of fact, we have a farm that especially is specially related to agriculture. But unfortunately, there is so much bureaucratic bottleneck that is in those rooms. You have to come with large collateral, you must have, you must show enough of to be able to give back the loan, not to mention cost of interest rates. One way to do that is to make the special advance as the National Agricultural Corporation and Rural Development Bank to focus, to, be, to make loan accessing much more simple. And now we to make microfinance funds to rural areas which are the banks that are to the farmer to make it easier for the farmers to access them. And it to make it a, a better access to seeds, fertilizers, and, and other things that will make agriculture easier for them. Also, we should go to corporations. Most of our farmers are farmers that are poor and do not have enough clubs to be able to access these things. But if they can come together as a COVID society, and they were able to get much more help from just government, from financial organizations, from other research institutes, and so on. And lastly, it's creating a linkage, a linkage between our other institutes, our other federal research institutes, our universities, and our families. We have at least, I know of at least two or three, three universities of culture in this country. But let the teaching not stop in the classroom. Let the test be found. Our numerous research institutes do not just be hidden in their labs. But they should make, they should show that the research that they do is beneficial to Nigerian people by helping the farmers to implement what they have done. Our alignment for this is from the rest of our students. Hello, Mr. Security. My name is Osa Humirike, and I'm here to conclude on Mr. Security, the problems and the solutions I think that will help. Like we all know, there is no form of agriculture that is not practiced on land. Land is a major capital for agriculture. So we think that in 1978, there was this Land Use Act that is not well implemented. There has been a bureaucratic bottleneck on the use of this Land Use Act, thereby not making farmers get access to the land very easily. So we think, you know, the land we have in Nigeria today is basically placed under the charge of um, the federal government. So we think that the land use act should be reformed in a way that farmers can have direct access to land, not really going through a lot of protocols. And again, the cost of land for agriculture should be reduced to farmers. Another thing I think is actually a big problem to, the, to food security is rural urban trees. We have very few persons in the rural area who are now left to practice agriculture. I think that is a very, very, very wrong thing, and that has drawn our agricultural system very, very backwards. Some time ago, Malaysia came here to wish him cocoa to Malaysia, but today we are nowhere. So I think we should actually work on that on our transportation, on our education system, and on our storage system. Thank you very much. Hello fellow Nigerians, I'm Salo Bijon and I represent this class and E. And here with me is... Wodo Okay, we're going to be talking about the problem of education in Nigeria. You know, during our PTS independent celebration, independent celebration, I was asking myself a question, are we really an independent nation? The first thing you have to think about when you talk about independence is economic security. Yes, 